Hello, one and all, and welcome back to another episode of The Damage Report. I'm John Adirola. It's a Friday, which means Red Ehrlich. Red, how's it going? You know, John, I, I, uh, my, my beard hair is a little short by, by mistake. I did notice that. I love that that Look, could be a mistake, but, um, but it looks good. Okay. Have you seen when you shave? Reassured. It's a mistake. Well, I'm gonna do it again. You know, and the more you challenge me with those insults, the more likely it is to happen. So just get ready, everyone. I'm going to be clean shorn soon. Anyway, <laughs> Brett, it looks good. We're gonna see what the audience thinks. And uh, uh oh, the comments are already coming in. <laughs> anyway, um, we'll see what happens. Okay, so we've got a lot of news to talk about, obviously, since this is still technically a, a political news commentary show. Um, but we're very glad to have you here because we're gonna get to talk about some of the truly most awful people in the country. And, and I know what you're thinking, John, you constantly talk about people that are awful. That's true. But this is one of those days where they're awful and we get to make fun of them for it, which <laughs> is way better than the alternative. So we've got that. We've got. Elon Musk being the cringiest little baby boy. Oh, I can't wait to show you this video. It's so good. I don't even know if the video or the story is better. They're both amazing. So we've got that. We've got uh, changes coming to Title IX, very interesting. Uh, really, really devastating change coming to Mississippi that's being described by politicians there as a modern day form of apartheid. So we'll talk about that and in the aftermath. We're finally gonna get to the canceled comedian returning. Uh, Donald Trump's thoughts on Rihanna and your garbage people of the week as well as ours. So lots of fun to come, Brett. Thank you for joining me for this. It's great to be here. I was literally just feeling my face. It is crazy. I don't like the feel. I want there to be more It'll hair. Go back in a week. We'll see. Okay, so uh, please, everyone, hit the like button, share the stream, so people know we're live. And as always, you can send us comments, tweets, super chats, and you can do that about literally anything you want. But if you can send in a particularly funny or insightful comment about Brett's new facial hair, you might win a Blue Apron gift card for a hundred dollars. So how fun would that be? What anyway, that's like? a tough one. I don't know what it's. I don't know how to do that one. But anyway, um, lots to come. Uh, Brett, what do you think? Should we jump into this thing? Let's do it, John. Let's do it. Apparently for weeks now, Elon Musk has been very worried about something going on on Twitter. You might wonder, is it the fact that the entire service went down for literally hours two days ago? Or the fact that you couldn't follow anyone? Or they made a change to APIs that actually boned the entire sending of tweets and they have no idea what they're yeah. doing. No, no, it's not about that. That's big meta stuff. No, he's, his concerns are much more personal. He doesn't feel like he's getting enough engagement on his tweets and he is hounding his engineers to explain this. So you might recall, by the way, a week ago when he took his account private because a bunch of right wingers were saying that if your account was private, you get more engagement. And he immediately tested that out. And I thought that that was sad because uh, uh, evidence free claims being made by right wing grifters is no way to run a business. It turns out it's sadder than that because he apparently wasn't doing it just to please them. He really wanted to see if he could get more retweets by making his account. Private, uh, unfortunately, it doesn't look like that was the answer. And so on Tuesday of this week, he gathered a group of engineers and advisors into a room at the headquarters of Twitter. And big thanks to Platformer for breaking this story, which is now pretty much everywhere. Everyone go check out Platformer. He was asking them, why are his engagement numbers tanking? He says, this is ridiculous. I have more than 100 million followers and I'm only getting tens of thousands of impressions. I love, again, it's like the dragon sickness for money amongst billionaires. You get tens of thousands of interactions on your stupid half thoughts and that's not enough for you. What number would be enough? Spoiler alert, Elon Musk, literally nothing. Because like in so many areas of your life, it is a gaping black hole in your chest that you cannot fill with retweets. That's not actually how life works. In any event, employees showed Musk internal data regarding engagement with his account along, interestingly, with a Google Trends chart. And what they found was, Last April, he was at peak popularity in Google Trends. So this isn't just a Twitter thing, this is overall, what are people searching for, what are they interested in? He was at a score of 100. Today, he's at a score of nine. So if way less people are interested in you and searching for you and whatever, that's gonna necessarily have an effect on your engagement. So they had previously investigated whether his reach had somehow been artificially restricted. The shadow banning thing the right wingers constantly believe or at least say is afflicting them. And they found no evidence that the algorithm was in any way biased against him. And so he asked questions, he got answers. I guess we move on with our lives, except not. He freaked out. 
He yelled, you're fired, you're fired at the engineer who pointed these things out. Platformer has spoken with people at this meeting, including the engineer. They're not identifying that person because that person could be blacklisted from the entirety of the tech industry because that's what Elon Musk does. Anyway, uh, to bring them all in specifically because you don't think you're getting enough likes. To then fire the people that point out that they can't identify anything in the algorithm that'd be hurting you. And that it's just, you know, that people who moved on to other stuff is just sad behavior, really sad behavior, which is one thing, Brett. But this now influences an important social media uh, network. He is going to make changes, not just to pay off the billion dollars in interest he has to do a year or whatever, but specifically to benefit his own reach on the platform. And that is from the evidence of the last few months. Incredibly uh, inconsistent with, with changes that would be made to the platform that would benefit the platform or social discourse or whatever. What do you think? Listen, I hope we get to a point in Silicon Valley where instead of getting blacklisted for telling the boss what's wrong, that person gets hired. Because isn't that what they said yeah. about Silicon Valley in the first place? And why are we saying that Elon Musk is a, is is not doing well? Isn't their whole mantra fail early, fail often? He is the pinnacle of that ethos. He has failed immediately upon taking the reins of that. We should build more statues for mm -hmm. him at Twitter headquarters and maybe that's why they sold all of their big statues, including the giant Twitter logo and the giant at sign so that they can fund, because they're out of money, a giant statue of Elon Musk. And now we know what pose to put him in, which is him going like this at someone who won't <laughs> amplify his tweets on the platform he owns because they said it's him. Yeah, and that and that's really the, the central takeaway I think from all of this is he thinks it's anybody's fault. But his, maybe he's just insufferable. Maybe he sucks that much that honestly, he's failing at the game that Twitter is. Yeah, well, and and honestly, I mean, look, studies are showing that since he took over, overall traffic on Twitter is down about nine percent. So, yeah, your your activity would be down about nine percent too. All of this is very reasonable. <laughs> I don't understand why this is so hard. But again, it would be reasonable if you were just interested in understanding how things actually work. If you just endlessly need more, 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 me, me, more, more, well then no, you're not gonna be able to interpret all of this. And and the issue is like some of you might be thinking, so why do you care? Like if the whole point is that less people are paying attention to him, then John, why are you paying attention to him? Because it matters, it matters. It matters uh, symbolically with him being so emblematic of this sort of like elevated God figure that is so undeserving of the praise given to them. Praise that runs directly contrary to the actual way that they clearly think about the world and run their life and run their companies and all of that. But again, as I said earlier, it also matters because Twitter does still at this point matter until it's replaced by something that fills the same hole. What he does there does actually matter. In any event, um, the concern about identifying the engineer, I understand their concern because and I will remind you, he has already fired Twitter employees who criticized him. That's what he does. It isn't even just restricted to Twitter though. He, uh, Tesla employees are suing him, saying that they illegally fired him for fired them for complaining about his tweets and his strict return to office policy. So this is a guy who, when people criticize him or complain, which means you know disagree with a policy, he just fires them. He's CEO Karen. That's who he is. And I understand that there's randos on the internet that are like, yeah, that's good because they they want the power to just lash out in a knee jerk fashion at anyone that disagrees with them. They desperately want that power. So they would say that that's probably what genius CEOs do, but it doesn't seem to be working for them. I'll remind you, by the way, when it comes to engagement, one of the things, one of the changes that he made, you know, aside from just breaking the site last week, is they added this little view count thing to literally every tweet, with the trick being, oh, then you'll see how much reach you're getting or whatever, and then everybody will be happy. Except that does not appear to have actually worked. Those numbers, by the way, are based on literally nothing. Like I, I talk to people who have sources inside of Twitter that say that has no correlation to anything having to do with people actually seeing it. But even if it did, the way that they showed that was they cluttered up the bar underneath the tweets. They made the actual like and retweet things smaller. It is plausible that people are doing less of that because it's now kind of annoying to do. Which by the way, people complained about Twitter being very slow to roll out uh, new features and stuff in the past, what they would have done if 
the old teams had been in charge is they would have tried this out as a test, actually looked into it, found out what effect it has, not just purely hypothetically, but in the real world. That is not what he's doing here. He has a random thought while he's sitting on the can and then he dispatches the three remaining engineers at Twitter to do it with no thought whatsoever to the actual effects. And so again, this is just no way to run a company. Sorry, right. I know I have a lot of thoughts about this. What do you think? No, but like the thing about the, there's a lot, but to, to do the likes and add that to the bottom, that's like impressions in advertising. Like you get a billion impressions for putting a tiny sign up in the corner of Times Square. It's a number invented by advertise by the advertising industry to justify charging you a lot for running ads. No one, an impression is not an engagement. The engagement is the important part and the sad and one of the good things that Silicon Valley says that they've brought to the entire advertising industry is actual metrics as opposed to fictional ones like impressions. They can tell you like the engagement probability. And so what the problem is with Elon Musk is now there is proof. He just wanted to give people big numbers. You wanna see a bigger number than like five likes. You wanna see a thousand of something. Yeah. But now I look at the total views versus the engagements. And what's happening obviously is probably there's enough information for Elon Musk to realize why he's failing. He just has bad tweets. He just has bad thoughts, <laughs> things that people see and don't engage with. And because they don't engage with, because he's just getting more and more annoying over time because he's doing the same thing more poorly. People are essentially giving him bad grades that the algorithm is chewing on and just not surfacing to people anymore. Yeah. And pretty soon though, it'll probably be just his actual friends. Cause he's like, if you don't like what we serve you, go to the for you tab. People do that. Then it'll just be his fans. Then he'll get a healthy number again. And then he'll start working his way back up. But he has to shed all of this in the meantime. Yeah. And the last thing is like, like that dynamic that you started off this like part of it with of um, Elon Musk kind of you pointing out, he, he has this narrative about him and that narrative is false. Pointing out that a narrative is false is like Elon Musk fans favorite thing to do. The well actually, the Oscar Nunez of it all. Like the actually, that's not true. <laughs> and I'm gonna debunk what all these you know sheep uh, believe because I'm a lion. What they reveal in rejecting all these obvious bits of evidence that are counter to their narrative is that they just picked the guy. Mm -hmm. There's nothing about him that's great. It's just that they picked him and now they're too embarrassed to admit that the sky's blue and that yeah. this guy is not actually Iron Man. I agree, I agree. And 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 by the way, it is it is such a fact because their admiration for him was based on hype and all that and not on fact, similar to Trump. Um, the, we are ill-equipped to use the clear fact that he's failing to take them away. Like, first of all, they have a get out of having to have any critical thought, whatever uh, free card. When I point out, like I, I put up all those things about him, like knee jerk firing a bunch of people who criticize him. And what they'll say is, why are you obsessed with him? So like, if they think he's done something good, then they'll talk about it because it's amazing. Anything bad, they don't have to consider it, you're obsessed. They don't need to rethink their, their uh, the, the world. Um, and they and will it, interpret everything. Like when he when he said that he was going to be re restricting your tweets unless you pay, uh, that's one of the new proposed policies or whatever. I was on a Reddit thread. Tons of people were like, "Yeah, no, I think that's actually good. I, I think like too many people give too many thoughts, but you love him because of the free speech thing. And now you switched over to only the rich should be able to say whatever they want. Like they feel perfectly comfortable taking that trip. It's madness. It's just like a guy that's in. Um, a room with a bunch of Star Wars figurines and is no offense and has like completely pegged his entire identity to this. And then like Phantom Menace comes out. And it's like, what? <laughs> but like Phantom Menace come out and he's like, uh, no, it's good because my identity is this. Cool. Am I gonna have to go find some other person to toady? I can't, I, I can't, I've already Phantom bought Menace, too like, many but. Elon Musk figurines. I know, I know. And I think the only way to really um the only way to really reveal it is to take like their isms and point them at at Musk and just be like, you know, A people hire A people and B people hire C people. Well, firing your lead engineer cuz he pointed out that you have a substandard performance, that is B people hiring C people. That's not A people hiring Wait, A people. 
you're talking about the like strong men create good times, good times create weak men, weak men create hard times, hard times create strong men. We should yeah, make it's that. It's weird that you memorize that. Photos of Elon Musk because I see it all the time on Twitter. Anyway, also it's not that difficult to map out the the ridiculous uh, thoughts. Anyway, um, get off my back. You've already attacked me on Star Wars. Now you're attacking me on mem memorizing memes. No, but I'm I do want to talk about memes though, Brett, because yes. and I understand this is a weird thing to start off the show with, but I just I want to have some fun. So. I had to watch something that hurt my heart to see. And so like with The Ring, I'm now gonna make you watch it so the curse turns to you. Let's jump into this video whenever you're ready. Yeah, exactly, it's the whole point of a meme. Exactly. Yeah. And typically you like the, the meme too that you'll post and so people know where it's come down. It's belonging to people. people. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, you create your own memes though, don't you? Uh, I saw it create some yeah, memes. Um, your, your meme king is strong. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, no. I don't want to believe that that's, I don't want to believe that that's real. Please tell me that deep fakes are more advanced than I thought at this point. And someone made that whole cloth. Tell me that he did not spend time in a room. Set up a camera, by the way. Why was that camera running? And then have three young engineers defending him from accusations. From the people he robs of memes, by the way, that he just takes them, doesn't credit them, and then tries to present this idea that he makes literally any of this. Yes, memes are meant to be shared, but we could also point out that when you are tr trying to craft from whole cloth the idea that you are a funny person, and by the way, that many of the memes you steal are terrible, um, people can criticize you. To then surround himself by these engineers that have to defend him saying, well, at least you like it, or don't you make some? Your meme game is strong. I, I get that if they don't say that, they'll be fired. So they're not the villains here at the end of the day. They could lose their entire careers if they don't you know, feed him grapes and fan him with a palm frond or whatever. But Brett, that is just no way to live as a 50 whatever year old man. Oh, it is every way to live, John. That is the dream I have. <laughs> That's your dream? Like that sounds awesome to do, but only if you're also successful in doing the job. That's like <laughs> ask any football fan. It's like I want Aaron Rodgers to be the best because he's my quarterback. And in being the best, he's paid a bunch of money. What you don't want is this guy to be paid a bunch, a bunch of money to suck it up on the field, <laughs> to be horrible. That's when you get mad. And that's where Elon Musk is. He's this guy who has a bunch of money and a bunch of clout. And then he goes and lays turds on the 50 yard line every day. <laughs> and worse, he gathers the offensive and defensive coordinator to point at the turd on the center of the field and say, tell me it's beautiful and that it doesn't stink. Brett, your turd game is strong. Man, your turd game. And he's he's like, he's stealing other people's turds. He's like scooping it. <laughs> it's not even his. Look at he what I did. Didn't even poop. <laughs> the the I apologize hey, for taking hey, this down this you, road. Sometimes you flush their toilet when you take their poop. I mean, it's, you do that. Right, it's insane <sighs> statements like this. And you asked a question earlier that's like, when I point this stuff out, they ask, why are you obsessed with Elon Musk? First of all, calmer than you are, dude, calmer than you are. Like, I am not obsessed. The reason I point it out is because it's so goddamn hilarious. It is like, very, very and, funny. And how insanely hard and these folks contort themselves into these twister positions so that they support Elon Musk who's just sitting on their face. Like it is hilarious. The thank you, sir, may I have another mentality of Elon stands is so amazing and delicious. And honestly, at this point in the arc, when I open my phone, I will do the for you page because the for you page <laughs> is hilarious and full of pathetic Lonnie stands like this. I avoid it, but I respect your desire to be on it or whatever. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, are we upset? Like you're you're more calm. I don't even care if I am or not. Again, it isn't at the end of the day really about him. It's similar to the fight against people like Donald Trump. It is fighting against the modern day myth making that upholds rich mediocrity. I believe that that is holding back our society and we need to fight it by taking down their avatars. It's like Shadow of the Colossus, but it's just a bunch of really dim witted rich people wandering through the country ruining things. And it's our obligation to climb up their back and take them down metaphorically. Yeah. Anyway, I would make a meme out of that, but I'm worried that Elon Musk would steal it. 
Okay, we're gonna take a short break, Brett, that's good. Yes, we're gonna take a short break. We come back, lots more to get to, including more puppy related crime after this. Brett, you have been corrected to brownish area with points, but I believe you were adapting. The no, I, I couldn't remember oh, what it really? was because I just know okay. she has like black hair and in it's an Arrested yes. Development reference to Lucille too, where Buster sees her without his son without his glasses on. She's like she's a brownish area. There is no Oops. someday we'll have a trivia off, and I don't think anyone can beat Brooke when it comes yeah. to Arrested Development trivia. Anyway, with that said, we've got more news to get to. Let's start off with this. I was all in on this. This wasn't, I had my heart and soul on this. This isn't, this isn't about power. This is about getting stuff done. Having somebody like me come and represent other people who are just like me, simple minded folks who come from absolutely nothing and have a voice in Congress. That's why when Mitt Romney told me I didn't belong here, I, this isn't the first or will it be the last time that somebody has told me I didn't belong and I fought to stay. All right, well, I'm, I agree with you there. I, I think there's gonna be more accusations that you don't belong there, you simple-minded fool you. Uh, he started from nothing and then rose all the way to heights of becoming a uh, master uh, middle guard on the Brook volleyball team and a savior of dogs with cancer around the country. Yes, he started from nothing and he became nothing really, but technically briefly a congressman. In any event, that was an interview that George Santos was having uh, with Newsmax. And uh, there are more serious concerns having to do especially with lingering questions about where the hell all of his money came from in his actual run for Congress. Here is his answer to that. I would love it if you could be a bit more specific though. You're kind of talking a little bit vaguely uh, that, you know, for these loans, you know, there's collateral. There are things that in the past you've said, okay, it didn't come from Russia, it didn't come from China. Uh, you say legitimately. That's a lot of money. It didn't appear that you had jobs that would provide that kind of income where you can make these kinds of loans. So I would love it if you could be a bit more specific because these are, these are real sizable figures. Of course, Greg, the Volder Organizations was founded in 2001 when I stepped away from my previous employment. And I decided to go on my own to do exactly what I've did for other companies for years, which is capital introduction relationship management of high net worth individuals. Okay, he did rattle off a bunch of buzzwords in quick succession. There are some issues, as many people have pointed out. If he had actually started that company in 2001, he would have been 13. So I guess the other employment would have been a lemonade stand. And then he started a venture capital fund or something. I assume he means 2021, that that is when it was actually made. The issue is that he can just talk vaguely about representing capital, big money, blah, blah. There is no evidence of years of growing success in this field. Two years. Three years now ago, he had like $50,000 to his name. It is not impossible that in the next year and a half, he generated so many millions of dollars that he could afford to give $700,000 to his own campaign. But if that is the case, there would be evidence of that. And thus far, there is none. And I love, by the way, that in this case, George Santos is so toxic that even Newsmax feels like they can ask, for the first time ever, pointed difficult questions to a Republican. I don't know who what the name of that chucklehead was, and I'm sure everything else he's ever said in his life is terrible. But those were good questions to George Santos. Brett, what do you think? Right, the fact that they're starting to call him out, like they're liars themselves. Like that's their whole thing is they just take whatever anyone on the right says that seems to get like engagements and retweets from morons, and they say it. And they're like, sorry, we're liars, but you're bad. That's like, <laughs> you know those parts of town where they're like, we are Candy Cane Lane. And we design our houses to be at Christmas time, the most ornately lighted houses in the neighborhood. And he's like, all right, I'm with you, I'll be at home, I like to decorate. And it's as if Candy Cane Lane was like, dude, scale it back a bit. It is too much. <laughs> what you put on your house is way too much. Um, mm -hmm. he, the guy, he, I understand it. There's a part of when I say this is America, Jack, is like, it's, you know, Part of it is fake it till you make it, but you're a congressman now, so you've made it. Can you please just tell us every lie? Just out with it. It's gonna be yeah. fun. People are gonna actually like you more. We're at that point yeah. in the arc where it's no longer like he's already surpassed the, you know, I was in the Donald Trump make it crazy as crazy as possible. He he overshot that. And the only thing that America really likes more than than that is is someone who really puts their hat in their hand. 
and comes at you with a real apology that makes sense. But I, I fear that he's too much yeah. of an absolute pathological, like clinically pathological liar that he can't even wrap his mind around what he's did in any conscious way. Yeah, no, I mean, you, you see in his eyes, there's there's like no emotion there. Like there is something obviously deeply psychologically wrong with him that he believes that, like I don't know if he has a different view of what is the truth and what is a lie or he just, he cannot conceive of why it would be bad to lie to people because he doesn't see them as people. I don't, I don't think he sees lies or other people the same way that we do. Um, I don't know what his arc is eventually going to be. If it's going to be, you know, coming clean like Brett says, or if someday he's going to compete on the mass Singer and they're going to unveil him at the end, and then there's going to be an expose that it actually wasn't him singing the whole time. Um, I don't know what's going to happen to him, but I would really prefer it to not be in elected office. Uh, especially because there are more allegations of criminality coming out. You didn't think it was possible. We're m weeks and weeks into this, more stuff is still being uncovered. According to Politico, George Santos was charged with theft by deception back in 2017 in Pennsylvania's Amish country after a series of bad checks totaling $15,125 were written in his name to dog breeders in the area. So someone was ripping off possibly Amish dog breeders <laughs> to get free dogs. We don't know that they were definitely Amish. It was Amish country, which is not the same thing, but someone was doing it. Now, who is it? So we get some details from this political account. Attorney Tiffany Bogosian, who is a middle school classmate of Santos and reconnected with him in 2020, told Politico that the then future congressman told her the checkbook had gone missing in 2017 and blamed someone he knew for its disappearance. And she believed him, like defended him. He said that he had canceled the checkbook with TD Bank as soon as he had noticed it was gone. And Tiffany Bogosian said that he was clearly a victim of fraud. She was his friend a long time ago, defender. However, she told Politico she now doesn't believe her former classmates claim after he tried to get one of her personal injury clients to invest with a Florida firm that the Securities and Exchange Commission later said was a Ponzi scheme. So she even had his back after the Amish dog fraud. But now she's like, wait, he totally tried to con one of my people. What is with this guy? And by the way, it is entirely possible that someone stole uh, the checkbook and that he didn't actually do it. But wasn't it check like check fraud that he did down in Brazil? And it has to do with dogs. This whole charity is all about dogs. Like there are too many signs pointing to he tried to rip off the Amish for puppies. What do you think, Brat? Believe George. <laughs> I'm tired of this guy getting a raw deal. He is not a fraudster. It's so easy. It's such the easy narrative to believe that yes, just because he is at the heart of all of these lies in multiple places and all of them stink the exact same way. It's easy to just get suckered into that as a narrative and believe it's true. But what if he's just that unlucky? What if he's always be. been in the wrong place at the wrong time? This is America. He should be allowed to defend himself in a court of law hooked up to a lie detector test. I need mm -hmm. to see it. I need it streamed live on Twitch. We'll provide oh. the show. George Santos, come it. on down. You're the next contestant on DYT wants to hook you up to a lie detector. Because this <gasps> guy started a show where politicians, probably pass it. No politician would go on a show. Where they were hooked up to a lie detector, but that would be pretty exciting. We should we should set that up. Someone's idea. gonna steal it with a much bigger audience. Damn it. Anyway, exactly. um, yeah. Look, I don't. I like the idea that throughout his life he's been in the wrong place at the wrong time. The only thing I can say with certainty is that right now he's very much in the wrong place. <laughs> he should not be in Congress. Okay. With that said, we've got some important stuff to jump to. So why don't we do that now? Prominent figures on the right and on whatever the Democratic Party is right now have very different priorities when it comes to education. And as we cruise towards another presidential election, it's important for you to understand how the choice of one side or the other could influence the future outcomes for your children. Take people like Ron DeSantis, who could be the next president. He's focusing on things like erasing black history from Florida schools, and I assume that he would probably be interested in doing that nationwide. There's no end to the different books that they want to ban, uh, scholars who they want to hide, black uh, African American scholars, LGBTQ scholars, all of that. 
Um, also, you know, he's doing things like seeking transgender university students' healthcare information. There was the whole thing with trying to get the teen athletes' menstruation information, which thankfully, because of the public outcry, they actually backed off of that for now. So victory to those who fought against that. And uh, and it's not just him. He's an easy focus, and he is very prominent. But many red, red states have passed legislation to prevent trans youth from participating in school sports, including the 18 that you can see on this map. This is a nationwide thing, a focus of the right. Now, on the other hand, you have Joe Biden, who is not going to be some sort of massive culture warrior on the other side or anything like that. But he does have some things that him and his administration are working on, particularly a long awaited ruling that changes Title IX. This is, should have happened like a year and a half ago, but here's what they wanna do. It directs how federally funded schools and colleges handle sex and gender discrimination. It's gonna become public in May and it's unclear when it would actually take effect. So you are still gonna have to wait and it could eventually be overruled but or, or overridden by a future president. In any event, he pledged to change it during his presidential campaign. And for the last five months, the education department has been reviewing more than 238,000 public comments on the proposal. And I'm sure they are very, very rational. Here is what is actually apparently going to be proposed to change in the near future. For the first time, it would include protections for trans, transgender and non-binary students. It would expand the definition of sexual harassment, decreasing the threshold for what schools are required to investigate. Because in many cases, they can hide behind the fact that what is being alleged doesn't rise to the very stringent requirements that are currently in Title IX. It would add protections for pregnant and parenting students, acts a requirement for live hearings in college and university cases involving sexual misconduct, which some individuals might not wanna participate in because it's live in that fashion, and require schools to use a preponderance of evidence standard instead of a clear and convincing evidence standard in determining the outcome of most sexual assault cases, a change which advocates believe would reduce how often what is alleged by victims to be completely unjust outcomes would happen. So I assume that you're gonna be hearing much more about this, not only when it comes out, but when the right fear mongers around it for literally months on end. But Brett, what do you think about some of these changes that are being proposed? Listen, I'm looking at all the the things he did and they seem pretty terrible that Ron DeSantis did. I wanna start there. Um, I just think, yes, he has delivered for Floridians, but usually it seems like according to new evidence, he's delivering Boone's Farm for Florida teenagers. <laughs> and then also with these transgender laws that he seems to be like the bannerman for, or like the lead, you know, the guy hold, you know, the flag guy. Um, yeah. He, he, it seems like he really wants to see kids' genitals before they go swimming, which is weird. I think that's a hard one to say. And it's, and I, until that evidence came forward, that it seems like, um, and since he just says stuff and now it becomes a law, I'm going to, uh, or now becomes true for his viewers because it, they they hate someone. I hate Ron DeSantis. I'm gonna say things that I believe to be true as though they are true, as though they are actually happening because that seems to be his standard. So it looks like by that logic, Ron DeSantis, even though he's from the Republicans who say they're anti-grooming, has been grooming teenagers and they're pedophiles who wanna see kids junk before they get in the pool. And I think that is more disturbing than going to a, a swim meet for K through 10 year olds and just being like, everybody race, I don't care. Everyone's getting a, a, a ribbon. Mm -hmm. So that's it. Uh, with the Title IX stuff, that's very nuanced. And I, I'm not gonna be an expert on how they, on what's better or worse a process for finding out exactly what happened in a sexual harassment case. I don't feel like the need for there to be, like if there is a live hearing or not, like. You're supposed to be able to face your accuser and, and all of that stuff. And those are central tenets of the legal system. But do you need to face them in person or not? Um, do you want justice or not? I think those are things that um, I just, I, I would wanna see some kind of, you know, mm -hmm. are, there, are there those kinds of precedents in legal proceedings that protect people? And what are the outcomes? What do the outcomes seem to be? My gut is, I don't think the, Everyone needs to be in a room together situation is necessary necessary for us to find out what happened. Um, but I think it's bad, it looks bad politically for Republicans and that whole group to say, you know what? We don't we don't want to make it as easy as possible for justice to be served. Yeah, yeah. Under the you know, the banner to continue your metaphor of save the children. We want it to be effectively impossible to prove sexual assault. Like they, they just, 
it is so bizarre that they are so hyper focused on fictional made up whatever grooming or whatever amongst second graders. But then once you get to college, they could not care less about what happens to you. And whether if something happens to you, there's any justice. It's it's amazing how the standard changes. Um, it's it's political opportunism, that's what it is. And by the way, um, you, there might be some follow up questions about some of the changes that we've talked about and said, well, what about like you had showed in the map, all that focus on the athletes, trans athletes. This does not cover that. They say that they're gonna have a separate rule on the topic of transgender and non-binary student participation on certain sports. They're not saying exactly when that's gonna come. It took like a year and a half for them to, no, actually more than that, like slightly more than two years to finally make good on their campaign promises to change Title IX to begin with. So if this is coming later, maybe by the end of his first term, we'll see, maybe in time for a President Trump to replace, we'll have to see. Okay, with that said, we're gonna take our second break, but don't go anywhere, there's way more where that came from. Okay, in the chat I see and Twitch, a troll piece says, OMG, is that George Santos posing as Brett? <laughs> Wait, what was the thing that Brooke has a challenger for? For the Arrested Development trivia. Who was it? Uh, I just got rid of, wait, hold, hold. There was a challenger Stress for naps. Arrested Development. Who Stress was it? Snaps did it. Stress Snaps. So go and deal with that challenger. They're trying to um, replace you as Pirate King, actually. And there is a process for that. It involves- Melawan Raja. Yep, it was. Okay, with that said, we've got important news to get to. So, and actually more time for this block than I think we've ever had on a Friday. So let's all stretch out and talk about some of the worst news I've heard in a very long time. Mississippi's thoroughly Republican controlled house voted earlier this week to set up a new system for choosing now what will be unelected leaders and judges in Jackson. Why would they wanna do this? Well, Mississippi is one kind of thing and Jackson is a different type of thing. We're gonna read some numbers to see if you can figure out why they might want to have more control over it. Jackson, the city, is 82.5% black or African American, whereas Mississippi overall is 59% white. Now, uh, you know, the demographics and political identity are not a one-to-one -one thing, but we know that generally big cities in conservative rural areas tend to be more democratic. They don't necessarily vote the way that the rest of the city does. You see this in other places, including Atlanta, in Georgia, and all that. Now, wouldn't it be nice if you controlled the state, but couldn't or didn't want to appeal to the voters in a particular city to just choose their leaders for them instead? That would be convenient, it wouldn't be democratic, but it would be convenient. So here's what they wanna do. The proposal is HB 20, uh, 1020. It's been put forth by GOP backers as a measure to increase public safety and reduce backlogs in the courts. But local leaders have argued the measure is a power grab from the state's largely conservative white legislature against the majority black population of Jackson. Representative Ed Blackman, a Democrat, says only in Mississippi would we have a bill like this, where we say solving the problem requires removing the vote from black people. I noticed that this bill does not address part of the problem, which is lack of funding at that crime lab, one of the parts that they talk about in the bill. You're blaming Jackson because they can't process their cases fast enough because the crime lab is not operating at capacity because we don't give them the money. He added that the measure, which would allow state officials to appoint judges and prosecutors instead of the usual local process of electing them, wouldn't do anything to reduce crime, which makes sense. Unless you're making the case that for some reason, the voters elect judges and prosecutors that work slower than you would. It seems like you're almost intentionally not trying to solve the problem, but this is a great solution to ongoing problems from the point of view of the right. They had had to do a lot of work over many decades to strip voting places out of these cities, to you know gerrymander and split up districts and all that. It's a long gradual process to erode someone's political power. Just taking it entirely away and saying, you don't get to choose your leaders anymore, we'll choose them for you. Oh, And we're also not gonna provide any funding to actually speed up the process of adjudicating cases and things like that. It's, it seems, Brett, almost too brazen, but I think it's, it's an ambitious experiment. What do you think? No, no, no. Sometimes the obvious answer is just too easy, John. Mm -hmm. Funding, like if the, what they say of the problem can be fixed by funding the crime lab to speed things up, that's too easy. It just makes sense. And that's why we shouldn't ever do it. Uh, this is insane. The, this is, a, this they say that democracy is bad. Now that is directly related to when I mean, 
there's a lot of lies told about critical race theory. There's a lot of lies told about the uh, pointing out structural racism. This is structural racism. They are changing the structure of the society really so that a group that is a minority in a specific location, the whites can have power over the majority in that situation, in, in that uh, area. It is insanely brazen, but the problem is that in these states, I mean, typically what happens is this would be ruled unconstitutional at normally a state level before it gets to the national level. But in these states, they have gerrymandered the district so much that they are able to rewrite the state constitution to make it a crazy town. And in that crazy town, they are doing another cliche which is allowing the politicians to pick the voters. And but in this case, they're not yeah. even picking the voters, they're picking themselves instead yeah. of letting the people choose the politicians. Yeah, 100%. Um, this, I don't see how this could possibly stand, except that the state Supreme Court will allow it. And uh, God only knows what will happen with the SCOTUS. SCOTUS has made a couple of decisions over the past few years that were not exactly what I would have predicted. Generally, in areas where uh, a decision could like specifically protect Trump. They haven't been as defensive of him as you would have predicted. But when it comes to the right wing social uh, culture, culture war stuff, they're pretty much who you'd expect them to be. And here's the thing, if they just do this in Mississippi, that is bad enough. It is as they are pointing out, uh, I believe the mayor said they're looking to colonize Jackson. They're trying to put their military force over Jackson, try to dictate who has province over Jackson. While they simultaneously introduce a bill at how they can remove elected officials in Jackson. It reminds me of colonial power where they dictate who is our leadership. Totally right to say that. But you don't think that like the rest of the like Republicans around the country are looking at this and thinking, man, that would be really convenient in Atlanta. And honestly, you know, Austin, pretty liberal for Texas. So it would be great if we could choose their local uh, leaders as well. And right now their claim is that this will expedite uh, cases and stuff. But they're gonna start to throw in other stuff. No, we we have concerns about how elections have typically been run there, and so you know, for concerns over electoral uh, you know fraud and all that, we're just going to choose their mayor from now on. Maybe maybe it won't go that far. Maybe it'll just be a horrendous anti-democratic thing that they're doing uh, to the good people of Mississippi and of Jackson. But uh, this is the sort of thing that Alec could very well run with, and so I would be worried about this. If you live in a traditionally red state that has areas that are much more democratic, especially if they're majority minority, then you should definitely have this on your radar. Right, and the answer to your question or the, the next step is it, they'll take it as far as they can. Mm -hmm. That's it, that's the answer to all of this. They're taking it as far as they can. This kind of movement took its took itself into the halls of Congress to overthrow a democratic election. If you're asking, and it's so ironic that those, it's so contemptible and horrible. That these folks typically are the ones who say, we got to protect ourselves with these rifles against the tyrannies of government. They're the ones who are perpetrating the tyrannies of government. They are going in and choosing leaders for areas they don't like. And they don't like them because those, what, they're picking their own leaders? It's insane. Yeah. And they're starving them in another way. They're, they're cutting off funding to a crime lab. Well, and to, to theoretically justify the decision that they're making, like don't help them out, don't help them in the wake of uh, disasters, don't help them in the wake of you know the admittedly high level of crime there, and then use the use the chaos or whatever the situation that you've helped to encourage to take away the remaining rights of the people in that area. Okay, um, we're gonna move on to our last story in just a second. I want to read a couple of comments. Stray X says in a super chat, if they put in people that ignore crime, they have less crime. Come on, John, we know how they work. Yeah, and that's how it'll work. Uh, HA says, hello chaps. That was polite, I like that. Hello chaps to you as well. Uh, Patrick says, Amish dog breeders typically run horrible puppy mills where dogs are mistreated. So that would be a case of a bad person screwing other bad people. Um, and by the way, Annie Hudson similarly says, now I'm conflicted because Amish dog breeders are pretty much puppy mills, which are awful places they may or may not deserve to be ripped off. Look, I don't like puppy mills any more than the next person. But I also don't think that just because you have a bad business Crimes are justified against you necessarily in this particular case. How about they're both wrong? The puppy right. mill should be shut down and George Santos should be banished from Congress. 
I love that weird thing where everybody, not everybody in the chat, but there's this instinct in us all to be like, well, someone's the good guy and someone's the bad guy. It's like, no, everyone in the story can be horrible. And is it weird to anyone else that like the Amish are like, so uh, cash your charge? <laughs> like they we'll do that in this case, but yeah, they'll be yeah, the yeah. Amish. They'll be like riding their horse and buggy, but then they'll be on their cell phone because that is one of the, I, not I, all, but. I'm sure there's explanations. I don't. The explanation is anything that allows that that doesn't that if it's just used for business, it's okay. Okay. Well, that's that's a way. That's a way. Anyway, it's not my way, but it's a way. Okay. Uh, with that said, let's jump into uh, one more story. Oh, there's so much good stuff in this. We only have four minutes. Okay. I feel like I've said this so many times over the past couple of weeks, but I really didn't think that the investigation into the killing of Tyree Nichols could get any worse. Turns out that it can be, and you don't even have to go. Uh, that far back in time before the actual beating to find more terrible signs of what was going on inside of the Memphis PD. Apparently some of the exact same cops who were involved in the uh, murder of Tyree Nichols allegedly beat a black army veteran three days earlier. And this is according to a new lawsuit that's been filed for $5 million. Montarius Harris was with his cousin back on January 4th when he was quote, suddenly swarmed by a large group of assailants wearing black ski masks dressed in black clothing brandishing guns, other weapons, hurling expletives, and making threats to end his life if he didn't exit his car. You can actually see a photo of the aftermath of the beating. He says that he thought it was a carjacking initially. And the reason he thought it was a carjacking is because how would you think anything other than that? People with no identification dressed all in black, waving guns and ordering you to get out of your car sounds exactly like a carjacking. Well, it went really terribly, as you would expect, consistent. With the beating visited upon Mr. Nichols, says the case, the Scorpion unit exacted a swift, violent, and continuous physical assault on Mr. Harris that included punching, stomping, and dragging him across concrete. Fortunately, there were people in a nearby apartment complex that came out, and they are speculating in the lawsuit that if not for that, God only knows how much worse the attack could have been. It's hard to say, really, though, because the cops, you know, with Tyree Nichols, they were being filmed. It didn't seem to stop them, so God only knows. Maybe witnesses wouldn't have affected it, we'll never know. In any event, it ended with Harris bleeding from his head, left eye swollen shut, great difficulty walking because his right leg was swollen and severely bruised and his left leg was gashed. He's now facing a number of different charges, which the case asserts are false. We can get into that in a little bit, but Brett, what do you think about this? I think it's horrible and I think it should be further investigated and I think there should be swift action and these are things that seem quite obvious. Like, how does it how does it get to this point? Um, you have to look into that. I mean, when they have the Scorpion unit there, calling itself the Scorpion unit, and you're like, they didn't call it the like, they didn't even like go through the trouble of trying to name it like the the Heart unit, where it's like helping you know environment you know each other mm-hmm. achieve you know rational togetherness. Like, there's there's none of they don't do that. They yeah. called it the Scorpion unit. And they go out and they essentially carjack people because they can. And it's that kind of power that like, it's bad when you turn on your siren so you can make it through a red light. I mean, these guys mm-hmm. are taking people out of their cars and beating them half to death. And in many, and in this case of Tyree Nichols to death. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Um, yeah, no, it's not, it's not shield, it's not guardian unit, it's not bastion unit, it's scorpion unit. You know, that defensive uh, servant animal, the, the mighty scorpion. Right. Anyway, yeah. With no, like, it doesn't it just have claws; things. it has a stinger tail. Like its hands are like. Ah, ah. Exactly. Um, I don't know what's going to end up happening with this case. We're going to try to keep up with it. Um, I, like, imagine knowing, like, being friends or family with Ontarius Harris and knowing that the person, like, that it could have, could have easily gone that bad. Those same people would go on just three days later to commit a fatal beating, and also to think you're one of those cops when you. Go up on Tyree Nichols. You know what you just did three days ago, and you're already ready to do it even worse. To go way beyond even the most deranged idea of what you need to do to subdue Tyree Nichols. Like you were not satisfied with the blood that you exacted three days earlier. You needed more. Anyway, it's still being investigated. We'll see what happens. Uh, with that said, that's all the time we have for the first hour. Thank you, everyone, watching on linear platforms, listening on the podcast. Great to have you here. Please rate and review the podcast on Apple Podcasts if you don't mind. It really helps. For those on Twitch, YouTube, all the other platforms, there's a lot more, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
Thanks for listening to the full episode of The Damage Report. Support our work, listen ad-free, access members-only bonus content, and more by subscribing to Apple Podcasts at apple.co slash TYT. I'm your host, John Adarola. I'll see you soon.